All right, let's get this show on the road. So I moved. I now live in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So it's a different house, uh, different acoustics. I'm gonna try to make a couple of videos in a couple of different rooms. There's some echo here. I wanna see where the sound's gonna work. I'm using the same uh, lapel mic and the same phone. So hopefully it's all gonna pan out well. I want to record a couple of things today. And the one I'm gonna start with is on uh, focusing the eyepiece of the front focal plane scopes. I had a few questions about it and I had a nice discussion with Jeff Huber of Zero Compromise Optics who has sort of brought this to my attention. Uh, frankly, I you know, didn't pay much attention to this up front. Excuse me, I think. Is my microphone properly connected? Yes, it is. Anyhow, so Jeff Huber brought this to my attention. And then a friend of mine, uh, Will, who uh, bought one of the zero compromise, well, two of zero compromise rifle scopes, he sort of brought this up as well because of how ZCO, ZCO, whatever they call themselves, how they describe the eyepiece focusing process uh, in the manual. So I figured I should address this. I think Jeff is close to correct, but not perfectly correct. I don't know if I'm perfectly correct, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Anyhow, so um, we've talked about this before, right? So what does an eyepiece focus do? Eyepiece focus is there uh, for one thing, one thing only. It is there to perfectly focus on the reticle. Reti it is to make the reticle and the scope uh, perfectly sharp. In the second focal plane scope, you know, this is, uh, it's not difficult to explain how that works, right? So um, if you think of how a rifle scope is built, it's turret, objective, right? I need a new marker. Okay. So this is your eyepiece. This is, you're looking, okay, I'll, I'll use a red marker. You are looking through the scope from this side, that's where it sees something. So in the scope, there is a front focal plane, which is usually under the turrets, but let's call it, it's here. Okay, so whatever the rifle scope is looking at gets focused here, there's a bunch of lenses here. Under the rear portion of the tube, there's the erector system, and all it does, it re-images with some other quirks, it orients it correctly, magnifies it, yada, yada. The image from the front focal plane, which is here, into the rear focal plane, a second focal plane, called SFP or RFP, second focal plane or rear focal plane, right? And then there are some lenses here, and uh, you know, what else is usually there? Uh, something, there's three or four sometimes more lenses in an eyepiece, and all the eyepiece does is it picks up the image from the second focal plane and makes it come out of the eyepiece so your eye, the lens in your eye now can do, refocus it again, take this quasi-collimated uh, uh, beam and focus it on, a, on your retina. That's how we see things, that's how we see things through a rifle scope. So in the second focal plane scope, this is all nicely straightforward and one of the uh, reasons it's straightforward, if the reticle in the second focal plane here, it's always in the same place, right? And the, its apparent size to the eye is also always the same, regardless of what you do with magnification. Magnification happens before it. So you use your, you set to the highest magnification, which is where it's usually the trickiest, and you adjust your eyepiece so that the reticle is perfectly sharp, all right? In the front focal plane scope, for obvious reasons, there is no physical reticle that is in the second focal plane. Right? The second focal plane is a spot where there is nothing. There are no optics there, there's no lenses there, there's no reticle cells there, there's nothing, okay? The reticle is here, the image comes from the objective, gets superimposed on the reticle, and then the whole thing together goes through the erector system. That's why the reticle uh, magnifies, etc., with the image, okay? And because of that, the apparent size of the reticle to your eye changes with magnification. 
because of that you have a weird effect right I'm not didn't want to draw a complicated radical uh, let's think of a simple crosshair radical right low magnification it looks thin high magnification it looks thick okay right it scales up and down together uh, with the image okay there is a little in principle it's the same radical it's the same angular size and all that but the way human vision works when something looks big it will also look sharper to you right what happens is that when we evaluate when we try to focus on the radical we're trying to make it perfectly sharp perfectly sharp really depends on how we see the contrast between the radical and everything else right and how we see the contrast depends on the size of the thing that you're looking at if the radical is nice and big it may look sharper to you than it actually is and it may be pretty difficult to perfectly focus the eyepiece on something that thick because it will look pretty sharp for most of the adjustment range and you may not be able to tell the difference so in the manual for uh, zero compromise optic for ZCO rifle scope I think I haven't seen the manual that's what Will told me uh, they wrote that you should be focusing the radical on the lowest magnification all right that's not always necessarily correct either because some of the center thin lines that are right in the center which is where you want to focus the radical are not all that not all that easy to see they're pretty thin right and this will vary from scope to scope because everybody sizes the radical differently but I've designed a few uh, radicals here and there and honestly when I try to size up a radical for a front focal plane scope like the next clip I'm gonna do is on the uh, Meopto Optical 6 uh, scope and I designed the radical for the sucker it's a nice scope and I'm pretty happy with the way the radical has turned out but I designed this radical so that a lot of the small features are not really easy to see at low magnification at low magnification I want it to look basically like a duplex or a basic crosshair something right and then we use illumination you know to make it stand out but um, if you can't see the thin lines well enough you cannot focus the eyepiece on them either so you need some sort of a Goldilocks setting and this Goldilocks magnification setting will depend on your eyes so you have to mess a little bit with the magnification of the scope and uh, set it on a setting where the thin features right in the center are reasonably clearly visible but still are small enough and what happens at that magnification setting is that when you start messing with an eyepiece it's going to be comparatively much more easy to see where it is really in focus and where it really isn't there will still be a certain range of adjustment where it will look like it is perfectly in focus and what you need to do you need to figure out where the edge of the adjustment is on one side and then on the other side figure out how many turns of the eyepiece focus or some fraction of a turn it takes to get from one to another and set your radical right in the middle of that right that is the uh, right way of doing it but which exact magnification you'll be working with will depend on your eye but basically you need to be working with a front focal plane scope you need to be focusing the eyepiece on a magnification that is the lowest where you can still see the fine central features of the reticle uh, clearly okay all right i hope that makes sense so one last comment right as i mentioned earlier the reticles in the front focal plane and gets combined with the image and then travels through the erector system to the second focal plane where the eyepiece sees it if the rifle scope from the factory is not perfectly calibrated the radical focus may change between low and high power somewhat right on good scopes it is effectively imperceptible but there are some very high erector ratio scopes uh, where if you really pay attention there'll be a couple magnification settings where the radical comes out of focus a little bit and then snaps back in as you change magnification further right and that is an artifact of uh, trying to have too much zoom right if your scope uh, zooms from you know 3 to 24 with an 8 power zoom it is difficult to make these the erector system re-image 
whatever is in the front focal plane onto a second focal plane to the exact same spot perfectly for all magnification settings right some optical systems do it better than others um, i'm not going to call out anybody specific this thing is difficult to do and it's generally a fairly minor thing uh, but uh, it's something that can happen you can have a perfectly focused reticle and accidentally stumble on a magnification setting where it's not perfectly focused I would suggest you do not start messing with the eyepiece focus and try to mess, it, uh, mess with it between different magnifications. Now, if in your scope there is an obvious difference between the radical focus between the high and low magnification, um, I suggest you talk to the manufacturer. There will be some difference, but it should be almost imperceptible. And when it is almost imperceptible, you should make sure it looks sharp at lower magnification setting because at higher mags when the reticle is nice and big you will see it clearly anyway right it should not be going out of focus in any sort of a perceptible manner and when it does a little bit your eye will you know, accommodate the basic idea is to set it up so it is functional across the whole magnification range right and to do that i think your best bet is to use the lowest magnification where you can still see the fine radical features uh, clearly. Anyhow, I hope all of this makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, ask a question in a comment, uh, ask a question on my website or one of the forums I frequent or shoot me an email. I'll be happy to go into more detail as necessary. And I hope uh, this clears up some questions here and there. Uh, once again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. And tell me if the sound uh, came through okay. Thank you.